So let's get you awake tonight. So if you watched my first video, and not many of you have judging by the stats, I said that my plan was to talk about stuff. And while of course it's nice to talk about happy, light, and fun stuff, I guess I'm just kind of old enough now, and with age comes the onset of both wisdom and cynicism, that I know we have a lot of unpleasant stuff we need to deal with every day too, so if you'll indulge me for tonight, here's mine. So Monday would have been my 13th wedding anniversary. I say would because like approximately 50% of all American marriages, mine also ended up in divorce. It's kind of surreal doing a total 180 from what on the outside seems like a stable relationship to then being in court dealing with lawyers and custody rights and divvying up whatever piece of the life you had with the person that you decided to dedicate your entire life to. There's an interesting web graphic that I stumbled across that said, aside from the fact that approximately half of all American marriages end up in divorce, that that breaks down to one happening about every 13 seconds in this country. That 41% of first marriages, 60% of second marriages, and that 73% of third marriages all end in divorce. They also cover the impact that divorce has on children, giving us things like how kids from divorced families are twice as likely to drop out of high school, 25% of adolescents who experience divorce become disengaged from their families, and kids from broken homes are more likely to develop emotional and psychological problems as they mature. Now my parents split up when I was five, my mother remarried when I was eight, got divorced again when I was ten, and managed to make the third one stick, but still you could make the argument that I had already been through two as a kid before before I finally got hit with my own. But if you were to ask 100 people why it is that marriages don't seem to last anymore, you'd get as many, if somehow not more, answers. According to a Bloomberg News article published earlier this year, divorces are actually on the rise again after the Great Recession caused them to dip for a few years. Basically, everybody was in such bad shape that they really couldn't afford to divorce each other. But now that things are theoretically balancing out, it looks like it's back to business as usual. The one thing that everybody seems to agree on, though, is that most marriages break down due to three key things. Poor communication, financial issues, and abuse. In my case, I worked three jobs when I got out of school because they were the only things I could manage to get with how things were. So the stress that was involved had a dramatic impact on our relationship. But having grown up in a home where I both saw and was subjected to abuse, it was made very clear to me at a very, very early age that you simply do not treat the people you're supposed to care about that much like that. I also understood that having disagreements and arguments are actually a sign of a healthy relationship because it shows that you can have differences of opinion and you can learn to work them out with your partner in a constructive manner. But I was so conscientious of this in fact that I also chose to ignore the signs that I was in an abusive relationship. Now don't get me wrong, the ratio of women who are abused by men is much greater than the other way around. And as a man who would never consider for a second ever doing that to anybody, Believe me, that bothers me to no end. But that doesn't mean it doesn't happen either. In fact, there's growing evidence to suggest that a percentage of abuse cases are ones inflicted upon men by women. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, and I put a link along with some other stuff down in the fine print, domestic abuse can include preventing you from seeing family or friends, trying to keep you from going to work or school, controlling how much money you spend, where you go, what you wear, and even being so jealous and so possessive that you're constantly being accused of being unfaithful, even though you show absolutely no signs of being so. It's not easy for me to admit this, but it is something I had to deal with off and on for the better part of 16 years. In fact, when my son was born, I was so stressed out and so depressed about it that I completely and totally came apart. I had a full-scale nervous breakdown and spent four hours in the closest thing to a rubber room that the hospital had available. And not many things end a relationship faster than somebody going totally off the rails like that. Now, when I got married, I took the vows I made very, very seriously. And you ask anybody who's ever known me for a substantial amount of time, and they'll tell you as much. But that said, was I a perfect husband? Honest answer, no. But I pushed myself as hard as I possibly could to be. But it also wasn't so one-sided that I can't admit my share of mistakes. And I know for a fact that I fell short of both my own expectations and the expectations that were placed on me as a spouse. It turned out I was just in a no-win scenario. And when it comes to a marriage, that is a truly, truly frightening place to be. They say that the two most transformative points in your life are when you get married and when you start having kids. What they don't tell you is how much divorce changes you too. In the three years since, I did try to build a relationship with somebody else, but after I mucked that up jolly good, I decided it would probably be best for all involved if I just put in my retirement papers. Bottom line, 
Nobody ever goes into a marriage thinking it's going to end before the whole death to us part clause kicks in, but it does. And divorce sucks. I hate to say it, but there is no easy or painless way to go through it, and it does change you. It leaves you second guessing everything about yourself, wondering what you could have done differently. If you're as terrible a person as other people may want to tell you that you are, even though you know in your heart and in your mind that you gave it absolutely everything you had. Now, I am not suggesting at all that marriage is a terrible, pointless endeavor or a complete waste of time. But what I will say is that a lot of people I know waited until they were older and more settled in their lives and more comfortable with who they were when they finally decided to settle down and get married. And you know what? I really wish I had been smart enough to do the same thing. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to try again. There's days where I want to and there's days where I don't. I think the important thing is I just keep working on me and hopefully when I'm ready, somebody will be there. A guy can always hope, I guess. So I'm sorry if this is a bit of a downer tonight. I promise I will do my best to go back to being Mr. Happy-Go-Lucky and we can talk about more fun stuff in the morning. But for now, get some sleep. Enjoy dreams when you get there.